Well, our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, has spent the last week travelling through Ukraine. From the front line battlefields on the Donbass to the villages of Kherson, where some of Russia's best troops are concentrated to try to stop the Ukrainian offensive. His report contains some deeply distressing details. For Ukrainians, this is a fight for national survival. The hardest test any nation can face. It upends every life. It has ended the lives of thousands. This is Bakhmut under heavy shelling. At the moment, the center of the artillery war in Donbass. Left is good. More than 70,000 people used to live here. Almost all of them have left. When I was last in Bakhmut in the summer, there was shelling, but it was still more or less functional. Some buses running, a few shops open. But now, look at it. Desolation. This is what months of attritional warfare does to a town. Bakhmut's war hospital is a short ride from the mud and blood of the front line. The invasion, the casualties, the terrible cost of President Putin's attempt to subdue a people he says are the same as Russians, all of it has sharpened Ukrainians' sense of nationhood. Just behind the front line near Bakhmut, this is a Ukrainian artillery unit's daily routine. First, reloading their missile launcher. A 50-year-old Soviet grad B-21 that is a tried and trusted killing machine. Ukraine's autumn mud has slowed down generations of armies. Mobile warfare will be easier when it freezes over. The Russians saw them coming. Incoming. At the other end of the front line, a long day's drive southwest from Donbass is the district of Kherson. It includes the village of Mira Lubivka, recaptured by Ukraine after days of hard fighting in September. We went there because residents said the Russians had terrorized them in six months of occupation. And because of what happened when a soldier came to this house at 11.30 on the night of the 13th of July. He dropped this bullet during the next six terrible hours, say these women. Now with her daughter in a safe place. That night, Ludmila Mimrikova, a 75-year-old great-grandmother, was alone until she says the man forced his way in and raped her. Putin and the Russians will never be forgiven until the end of their world for what they did to the Ukrainians. There will be no forgiveness. As the seasons change, the war is at a critical point. Ukrainians need a victory this winter in Kherson. Russia cannot afford another defeat. That is a formula for a battle that shapes the course of the war. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News in Ukraine.